directors or the Board of Trustees of Eastern Illinois University. Issues and Attitudes airs each Monday at noon on 88.9 WEIU. Now, Issues and Attitudes. And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Director at WEIU Radio. My guest is Dr. David Glassman, our Eastern Illinois University President. Welcome, Dr. Glassman. Thanks, you, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to come and talk to you. I appreciate you coming in on this Monday as we kind of wind down another semester here at EIU. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, some of the stuff that's happened good news wise at Eastern in the, in the in this last uh, in this semester and then we'll get into some of the budget and some of the other stuff that we need to talk about. Sure, there's been a lot of good news this this semester. Things are going really well. Students are having a great time and a great experience uh, on our campus. Uh, we've recently uh, developed some new courses and new programs that are going to be taking place in the, either now or in the near future, and uh, they've been approved by the IBHE, uh, such as cybersecurity, a graduate program, another program in computer, computer uh, information systems and technologies that we're really excited about. Uh, uh, and more and more are coming online. Yeah, I think Com Studies has a new uh, one coming as well, right? Right, in health communication. Yeah, health communication. And that's going to be really powerful because the area of applied health right now is just booming. Uh, and communications is f uh, facilitating a gap in education there uh, that will really be highly marketable for our students once they complete their program. I agree. I think one of the neat things that people have been seeing around the state is this r the Rural King Trucks and the, and, the, and the partnership. How did that come about? Can you tell us? Sure. That It came about by... Uh, our director of uh, alumni affairs, uh, Steve Rich, and he had, uh, you know, came up and, and thought about this and, and knew that in the past that some universities had used uh, these moving billboards. Uh, and he talked to me a little bit about it, and, he, and I said, hey, go for it. And so he talked to Rural King, and they were very excited about it themselves. And the next step was to design what we would think would be uh, uh, very pleasing to passersby as the truck's going past. Uh, and we put it all together. We've got four trucks now. One of them is dedicated solely to uh, travel in Illinois. The other three uh, leave the, the state uh, and are back in 24 hours. So it's coming in and out of the state on every major highway that we have. And we're getting great feedback from from this uh, marketing effort. And they really look good. I like the way this trucks look. That was a neat idea. So, And I hate to give Steve Rich credit for that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to give him a shout out. There you go. Because he's the one that certainly came up with the idea and brought it to me. That's awesome. And uh, neat uh, award from the residence halls here on campus. They won a, uh, the award for the best residence halls in the state? Absolutely. And our residence halls are, are second to none. Uh, our management of our resident halls are, are just totally excellent. And the, the services that we provide our students uh, and the way that we provide them are just top notch. The students continually tell us in feedback that they are extremely satisfied with the residence halls on our campus. And that's a great marketing tool too. I mean, we want students to go out there and tell their friends that EIU is the place to come. Great housing, great academics, great place to learn. There you go. Now let's talk a little bit about, uh, a lot of it, I guess, because that is the right, right way to say it, about where EIU stands right now budget-wise. I know the Illinois Board of Higher Education uh, granted another $5.9 million to get us through the end of this calendar year. Is that correct? Well, it's $5.6 million okay. that, uh, that assists us even beyond the end of this year. Uh, and uh, we applied for the, this funding and uh, uh, sent over some materials to IBHE for them to review. Uh, and uh, they determined that we were eligible for additional funds. And these are funds for essentially essential operations to maintain the academic excellence and the student life of our students. And so it's very powerful, and it takes us well beyond into next okay. year. So in, how does that leave us in the spring for the budget? We, I, I know you don't, it, as you talk about budgets, and we know that the lawmakers are probably not going to go back to work until January. So where are we at right now budget-wise in the state of Illinois? Yeah. Of course, we're, we're hoping that our lawmakers and the governor will, will come back together in session and pass a complete uh, compromise budget uh, so that it's full and and uh, uh, we can move forward from there. If not, uh, we anticipate there will be additional stop gaps that will take place. Uh, the universities, all of them in the state, are confident that we will continue in strength. Uh, and we just have to deal with uh, uh, funding patterns that are different than they have been in the past. We are, we're adjusting ourselves to that. And so we see uh, really no, no issue with us getting through and making sure that we continue to have the, the best academic excellence and the best... Uh, uh, living and learning communities for our students. So we've, we've positioned ourselves very well. We did a lot of work last year in order to put ourselves in a financial position that's going to carry us through. And so 
we're, we're in good shape in that regard. And the big thing that you've been uh, working on in the last year or so, and it's kind of not coming to the beginning of the beginning of the end, is this vitalization project. And, and where do we stand? I know it's really like groups one through seven, then groups eight and nine are kind of lumped together. Can you talk in detail about where we stand on those? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the vitalization project, which we started this fall, has been going extremely well. And the individuals that are on the various work groups, and there's about 55, 58 different individuals on these work groups, have been meeting weekly, uh, sometimes even more than that, working on their recommendations for various areas uh, in order to improve the university, both in our efficiency, but also to position us ourselves to be more marketable and to increase our enrollments. That's the key right now. As the state continues to back off on funding for higher education, we know that we need to increase our enrollment to make up for that deficit uh, in funds coming to the university. And in order to do that, the vitalization process is putting together essentially a guideline for the administration as to what types of programs that we need to develop, how we can modernize some of the programs that we have already uh, on our curriculum, and how to make this university more attractive to students that are looking for a university that will provide them with the things that they're looking for. And that's affordability, the programs that they want to study, uh, a beautiful and supportive campus and fourthly they're looking for career placement and so we're putting together a package that's going to go out in that market and people are just going to be surprised that that hidden jewel of EIU is no longer hidden exactly. and uh, we we are very very uh, confident that we're going to rebound and that we're going to start to see increases in enrollment uh, as soon as perhaps next year but if not that we should plateau and then go straight up from there. Okay. When you looked at the numbers as they came in this semester, I think people were, there was a lot of people that were just, they were, it was the death now. People were way, going way low. And actually, I thought the numbers, in my opinion, came out about even better than what most people thought. What about your, your thoughts? Sure. There were a lot of uh, speculations that were taking place, not just inside our university, but across our entire community and region. And I would hear about the, uh, the thoughts that people had, and I'd, I'd be going, yeah, boy, you're, you're just not understanding the situation. We're going to do much better than that. We know that we're going to be down because the confidence, the student confidence and parent confidence uh, in the state of Illinois is not high right now. And so many students were looking to go outside of the state. But we knew that our returning students would come back to us because they love EIU and we reassured them that we would be fine as we were and we worked really hard in marketing and our admissions office uh, to talk to students prospective students and encourage them uh, and to have them know that EIU is going to be here now it's going to be here in the future it's going to be here for many many decades to come and that helped us that assisted us and we we had a nice class of very very strong students we never changed our admission requirements. We never lowered them or anything else. Uh, and we've got a great class of freshmen, and now we'll build on that from here going forward. And with the new admissions director, Kelly Miller, she seems to be really, really excited and out there, you know, really, you know, banging the drum, as they say. Talk about her and, and, and where we go with her, as the as future tells. Yeah. Well, Kelly knows EIU very, very well, and she knows the community very well. Uh, she's worked in housing for for more than a decade, maybe 15, 18 years, I don't know exactly. And she knows the students and she knows what students are looking for at a university, both in the student life area, but also in academics. And so she was a natural to come into this position and she has just hit the floor running, as they say. Uh, she is out there, she is putting together a great team of admissions counselors. We're revising a lot of our communications that take place and how we introduce EIU uh, to prospective students and how we recruit them and create those relationships that they know that EIU is family. Something that we know is part of our DNA. It's the most friendly university in the state of Illinois and probably beyond and we're showing that right from the start in our recruitment processes. She's doing a fantastic job, Jeff. Will that actually also play over into the marketing when you say, talk about the friendliest uh, you know, university in, the, in, the, in this part of the country? 
I mean, you, we, you bet, you bet. And we've been looking at various marketing initiatives right now. We have a work group that's dealing with marketing and branding our university, and they're going to be coming up with a number of recommendations. And we are going to be acting on these recommendations and getting our university positioned to compete against any other university in the state and beyond. We well, talk about a little bit about the vitalization project. You mentioned a little bit about you know when we can actually see some stuff, you know, actual material in hand, as they say. You're looking at this, the spring or, or, or fall of next year is when people actually get to see the, what the, the, the groups have come up with? For work groups number one and seven, one through seven, and, and these are work groups that are, are specializing on technology, enrollment management, marketing and uh, branding. Um, uh, they're looking at academic programs that we have, our academic program array. Uh, they're looking at, I'm trying to think quickly of the, <laughs> yeah, of the other right. ones I haven't mentioned, uh, <laughs> intercollegiate athletics. Uh, and so on. And they're going to be turning in their final recommendations as early as December 15th. That's when the, they are okay. expected to turn That's them in. next week. Wow. Uh, and those recommendations will then be posted to our Vitalization Project website at the onset of the spring semester. So very, very soon. There you go. Uh, the work groups number eight and nine are dealing with looking at program development for the future and the new types of, of majors, both undergraduate and graduate majors that are really going to propel us to to meet the niche and the needs that prospective students have there uh, have out there and our final work group number nine is looking at how we organize our different colleges and our different uh, departments in order to maximize again the synergy between different academic groups as well as what would look most marketable and most interesting to students who are looking for a place to come for their higher education. Okay. And so that will take place uh, all the way through the spring. So there could possibly be some combination of programs or ideas uh, in, in, amongst the university to, to, be, give it, to give it really a better feel for the outside? Is that an easy way to say it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at national market trends and where are the careers that are opening up uh, most quickly. Uh, and have the greatest need for uh, students to fill and at the same time make sure that we have modernized and have the best liberal arts foundation and fine arts foundation for our students to have the breadth of education that's the hallmark of EIU. Have you been satisfied with the response in terms of people you know working together wanting to work together understanding that we're in a time of change at EIU for the better? I mean it, it's incredible the amount of of input that's taken place and the amount of feedback that uh, that I've received and the feedback is all you know very very thoughtful and considerate feedback goes in different directions and so on <laughs> and every every bit of feedback that's been received continues to be considered uh, and thoughtfully uh, addressed as, as we move forward. Uh, when I started the vitalization project and I went out and I said okay I'm looking for volunteers that are going to spend a lot of their fall semester being involved in this vitalization project and I need to have at least 50 or 60 individuals volunteer across the staff and the faculty and so on uh, and I was sitting back you know what happens if nobody volunteers uh, and I was so pleased to see over 200 individuals that's that's just the nature of EIU and the passion that people have people want our university to move forward with strength People want this university to succeed uh, to its greatest heights, and uh, that's just that passion and that dedication to EIU is something that I first saw when I came here, and I have to tell you that it is just the way EIU is. Now, I've been around Eastern a long time myself, and I, I see the, it, more and more people willing to work together and the want to work together, um, and so I think that is, has been a really good you know, result of the last couple of years of, of you on staff, but I think everybody understands where we're at, and so hopefully that can will continue into the future. Sure. Last Tuesday uh, was the day of giving, uh, which you know uh, it seemed to be a very uh, good response. Uh, the goal was fifty thousand or so, and we went we went over that. Talk about the day of giving last we Tuesday. Did. Uh, EIU has never participated before in the in the day of giving. This is the the Tuesday event that yeah. uh, has been around for a number of years now. And uh, the development office uh, came to me and said, you know, we, we're thinking maybe we should be become involved in this. This is a great way uh, for people.
to give back to the university. Uh, we certainly have great needs for the university uh, to support scholarships, to support uh, uh, other types of programs uh, on campus. And uh, you know, let's 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 give it a shot. And I said, that that sounds great, but. We're really only doing this a week before, uh, you know, giving Tuesday starts. And they said, well, we're going to work hard and just see, just see how it plays. And so we thought, well, you know, if we could raise $50,000 in one day, that would be a wonderful thing. And that certainly would help a number of departments, a number of areas. It would help students and scholarship monies being added to endowments. Uh, and so that's, that's what we set at the goal. Let's get 50,000. We ended up with over 70,000, and that's just incredible, and it shows once again the great love that people have in the community, in, in the region, as well as all of our alumni and donors out there uh, just stepped up to the plate and once again said, hey, you know, I love EIU. Here's $100. Here's $25. Here's $1,000. And, you know, when you get a lot of people moving together in the same way, great outcomes happen. Yep. And that was a wonderful day. I wonder what would have happened if we started maybe two weeks early <laughs> or three weeks early and maybe did a little advertising. You maybe that would have worked a little bit better, but at least now we know you next year, everybody beware. Yep. Giving Tuesday is going to take uh, We're going to start place. around Halloween to get ready for that. <laughs> oh, you read my mind. What if we had started a month or two weeks? Yeah, uh -huh. that's funny. Um, the other thing I want to ask you is how often do you get to sit down and actually talk to like Reggie Phillips and Dale Ryder about what's going on in, in Springfield? Do you get it weekly, monthly, or how does that work? It, it works based on uh, both they will contact me to, to sit down if something's taking place uh, over in Springfield. Uh, and, of course, I make myself available immediately when they wish to have a sit down. If I have anything that I want to discuss with them, I immediately reach out. And both uh, Dale Ryder and, and Reggie Phillips have been there immediately to respond to either my thoughts or, or things that I have in mind. Or if I want to meet, they take the meeting immediately. And so we've met numerous times over the course uh, of this past year, and we will continue to do so as we move into the spring and uh, the new session. And to dispel some rumors, I'd like to, uh, with both of those, because it seems like those guys are all in the news a lot, they are both working to help this university, correct or not there, incorrect? There is no question. There is no question whatsoever uh, that my interactions with both Dale Ryder and Reggie Phillips have been very positive, and their work and, the, and, and their thoughts that they've communicated to me have been very, very helpful and helpful to us in Springfield. Do you get tired of the people that, that talk about the negative rumors about, not, not just those two, but other people uh, and when they talk about the university, when it's the untruths, I like to call them? Well, everybody has their, their own opinions, and, and, and their opinions are fine on, on both sides of the, of the table, whether they go you know, to this direction or to that direction, or if they think somebody is helping or not helping. Uh, the only thing that... Uh, uh, is important to me is that people are informed that they're making their judgments and their opinions uh, from things in reality and that's fine you know we, this <laughs> is a free country uh, and everybody can have their opinions how how people are doing their job obviously we want all of our legislators including uh, Reg, uh, Reggie uh, Phillips and, and Dale Ryder to move us forward to a full budget. That's that's what we're looking for. And then coming up almost, what, a year and a half without a full budget in Illinois? Unprecedented. Uh, yeah. It's never happened here. It's never happened anywhere in the, in the, in the nation. And uh, we are doing a disservice uh, to the public by not passing a full budget. Let's go back to a little bit of Eastern on campus. Uh, you, you know, as we all are still in the budget, you know, uh, you know, tightening issue, what can people do on campus, employees, you know, to continue to do to help save money and save resources here on EIU's campus? Well, we should all look to, to make sure that we're operating our, our various areas and our departments and our units in the most efficient manner possible. If there are ways to uh, cut costs to be more efficient, I ask that you do so, or if it's something that involves a procurement issue, that you talk to our CFO, Paul McCann, to make sure that we're following all of the laws uh, and policies that are set forth by the state. And there are many policies and laws that we, must, uh, uh, that we must follow. But really, what I've been asking all of our community, whether it's faculty, staff, students, anywhere across the university is to talk to people about how good EIU is and to encourage others to look at EIU uh, for their higher education uh, um, activities. Uh, whether it be having other camps on campus, things like that, 
or prospective students and their families to check out Eastern. We know that when students visit EIU, prospective students, we have a very, very high likelihood that they will come here because they love it. What we need to do is get the students to come here to explore. And uh, we have contacts throughout the state and beyond. So do our faculty, so do our staff. And we, I'm simply, and we are simply asking them to talk about EIU, encourage people to explore EIU, give us a visit, and we know that what they see they're going to love. I think believe also that you are trying to reach out to some international students with some programs. Talk about those. Absolutely. Uh, this fall semester, we have the highest number of international students than EIU has ever had in one semester. Uh, we have approximately 438. Doesn't sound like an approximate, but uh, <laughs> I believe that's our number, is 438. When I first came here, uh, I thought that we needed to more globalize our campus, and I gave our international uh, office uh, uh, the goal of having 500 international students on our campus uh, by fall 2017. Well, we have 438 already. We'll increase that number this spring. Uh, we certainly will go over that 500 number uh, in fall of 17. And I think that that's a very, very good thing. We all learn from having a globalized uh, university. And that's, uh, that's an initiative that's working very, very well with us. We have some new memorandums of agreement with some schools in China right now. Uh, we want to increase the number of students coming from different parts of the world, not just in one or two or three countries. Uh, and so we're working very, very hard on that right now. And everything looks very, very good. We're at this, the 468, you said? 438. 438. I must have some kind of problem with my numbers. Today. The 438, so where, where are some of the countries that they're from? I mean, the, the highlights. You know, the largest country that uh, international students are here on campus are from India, and then we have Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, China. I think we have about 30 or 32 countries represented by students uh, internationally, uh, and uh, we are a very welcoming and inclusive campus, uh, and the international students, and they created a video, I think it's on uh, 360, oh, 360 Web, yeah. check it out, uh, and you'll find that they are gratified to be here, and they are remarking about how welcoming it has been for them, and that just makes me very, very happy and very pleased. Now that you've been on campus for a while under the... Uh uh, you know, under being the president. Talk about some of the stuff that you've learned about Eastern Charleston, Coles County, if you don't mind. Well, <laughs> I, I've learned a lot in my, in my 18 months, uh, no question about it, and everything has been positive. This has just been a wonderful experience for me. Uh, and people ask me all the time, boy, you know, we've had these challenges in, in Springfield and, you know, it had nothing to do with, with you or the campus or anything else, but we, you know, we feel bad that you had to come into this. <laughs> and, I, and I keep saying, you know, that it is what it is in that regard. And, and, you know, Springfield, the budgetary impasse will be over. At some point, it will be resolved and we'll move forward as we did before, but we'll be moving forward even stronger because we've become more efficient. We are developing ourselves to be much more marketable and we're getting out there and we're telling the people of the state of Illinois, EIU is a great place to live and learn. Come explore us, come study here, come be a part of this community. And so those things are great. Uh, I've spent much more time talking to people this year than I did in my first uh, six months uh, from both Mattoon and Charleston and Effingham and all around our area, Tuscola, Arcola, Paris, and everybody is extremely supportive. And everybody knows how important EIU is to this community. And that's been very, very positive in its feedback. So I've learned that this is not only a great university, it's a great region. It's a great community to live. It's a great community to give back to. Uh, and the people here have just been so welcoming. It's just been ideal. There you go. Finals week is next week, which means commencement is coming up. Uh, you, you get your speech ready? No, <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not quite ready for commencement. I can't believe that this is the last week of the fall semester it, of classes. It has flown by. I, I cannot believe it. It has gone so fast and so positive, and we've all been focused on moving ourselves forward, dealing with the things that we can control, and that's all uh, made up in that vitalization project. But I had no idea that the semester would go so fast. Every semester goes fast, but this one just blew by, 
And no, I have not started <laughs> commencement uh, writing, and uh, it just seems like I started the writing for the uh, for, for, for my state of the university address that was back uh, at the beginning of the semester. Oh, yeah. So I got to get on that myself. And uh, also, it's the time of cheer, and there's lots of people celebrating, uh, and of course, our our students who are graduating uh, in December. I want to have a shout out to them and say. Well done. There you go. You made it. Now, it's been a good semester in terms of uh, being on track. A couple minutes left. I wanted to leave you with a couple of minutes. Are there some people on this campus or in this community that you'd like to you know, publicly thank for just going above and beyond the call of duty here on the campus of Eastern Illinois University? Jeff, every time you do that, <laughs> man, you end up in trouble. You end <laughs> up in trouble because there have been so many people who have been supportive of EIU <laughs> and so many people who have helped me both inside the community of EIU and outside that I know I would forget somebody and that person I'll probably get an email or a text message before I get back to my office but I will <laughs> say that the mayors of the two cities Tim Gover in Mattoon uh, and Brandon Combs of Charleston have been phenomenal phenomenon excuse me have been phenomenal in supporting EIU and supporting my vision for EIU. And I appreciate the plug because those are the next two weeks' guests on here on Issues and Attitudes. Tim Gover next week and Brandon along with Scott Smith the week after that. And, of course, the chair of our board of trustees, Joe Dively, uh, who's still at home recuperating from an, an accident that he had. How's he doing it? He's doing fine. Uh, he'll be back uh, in action. He's still working, but working from home right now. Uh, he's doing well, and he is... There is nobody who supports EIU than our chairman of the board of trustees. There you go. Holiday plans? You going to hang around here? Going to hang around here. There you gonna go. Have, uh, going to have the holiday here uh, and uh, participate in all that I can to, uh, to create the, the cheer and celebration that we all need. One of the things I want to ask you, Robert, before we get out here real quick, you know, we do a lot of tours here on, on campus when the families come. What do the moms and the dads uh, ask you? And I know the students sometimes are quiet because they're just, their eyes are big mm -hmm. and they're looking around. What do the moms and dads ask you? Well, for, for all the visitation days that we have out here, um, that is the major visitation days, the open houses, I always talk to the entire group of prospective students and their parents and tell them about EIU and tell them uh, about the nature of it and the friendliness of it. And the question that I get back from moms and dads is generally not a question. Now, the feedback I get back is they say, you know, you're right. You know, you, you're up there and you're saying at the beginning of the day that we're going to find that it's beautiful and we're going to find that the resources are all there and that the faculty are there to help uh, and that uh, we feel secure and everything else. And beyond that, everybody but everybody has been so nice to us today. We know how wonderful this university is. Uh, and I simply nod and I say, yep, I'll help you move in in the fall. There you go. Well, I wish you a happy holidays, Dr. Glassman. appreciate you coming in and, uh, and a great new year. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, hopefully in the spring semester with uh, maybe some news from Springfield. How about that? That sounds great. And happy holidays to you, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. This is HitMix 88.9 WEIU's Issues and Attitudes. We'll be back next Monday with Mattoon Mayor Tim Gover. And in two weeks, Charleston Mayor Brandon Combs along with City Manager Scott Smith right here on Issues and Attitudes. Everyone have a great day and happy holidays. This is Hit Mix 88.9 WEIU, Charleston, Illinois.